Welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I will be discussing your analysis, a lab test that's very important in clinical practice. It plays a huge role when it comes to diagnosis, choosing therapy, and also monitoring the patients after they're on that therapy. So it's important that all pharmacists are familiar with the components of this test. So let's begin. So a urinalysis is simply a test of the urine. And with this, we assess several things with the goal of detecting certain disorders or diseases associated with the kidneys, uh, UTI infections, or diabetes. And it's usually used in conjunction with other tests, such as a CBC or a CMP to make diagnosis. Now, a complete urinalysis consists of three distinct testing phases, a visual examination, which evaluates the urine's color and clarity, the dipstick exam, which tests for certain substances, and the microscopic exam, which will help identify cell types, proteins, and microorganisms like bacteria. So for the visual examination, you want to assess several things. So this includes the appearance, color, and smell of the urine. Now for the appearance, an abnormal observation is a cloudy urine, which can be due to an elevated white blood cell count due to an infection. Think of how clouds are white, so then white blood cells, Sometimes cloudy urine can also be attributed to dehydration or kidney stones. Your urine becomes foamy when there is a lot of proteins in it, and this could be a sign of renal damage. Now, to solidify what I just informed you, here is a picture depicting a cloudy urine and another of a foamy urine. Now, when your urine color is red, it usually means that there is some blood, but sometimes it's due to what the patient ate, example, beets, or a medication. Good examples are doxorubicin and finazepiridine. So what is your role as the pharmacist? Make sure you counsel the patient before administration of medications that can change the color of the urine. Last thing we want is for patients to be non-adherent to medications because they noticed that their urine color changed. A side effect of the medication that is benign, but you wanna make sure that the patient understands that. Now, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button. It takes one second and it costs zero dollars. Thank you. Lastly, if the urine smells fishy, it's most likely due to an infection. And if it smells like acetone, it may indicate the presence of ketones. So the visual exam gives you an idea of possible problems, but the dipstick exam is more accurate. The exam assesses the patient's urine pH and imbalances may be due to kidney disease. Also, elevated glucose levels in the urine should prompt a follow-up for a diabetes workup. The test can also detect blood and ketones, which most commonly are associated with ketoacidosis, uncontrolled diabetes, and keto diets. Now, bilirubin kind of goes together with urobilinogen, so I'm going to discuss both of them. Bilirubin is made during the normal process of breaking down red blood cells. It is a yellowish substance found in bowel, a fluid that's made by your liver to help with digestion. Now, when the bilirubin from the bile reaches the gut, it gets broken down into urobilinogen, and some of it is absorbed back into the blood and excreted by the urine, but majority is excreted by the stool. Now, because of this, you may see urobilinogen in normal urine, and this is actually what gives it the yellow color, but you shouldn't have any bilirubin in your urine. Any amount of bilirubin or elevated urobilinogen should prompt you to assess the liver or assess for hemolysis of red blood cells. Leukocyte esterase is an enzyme present in your white blood cells. Therefore, the presence of this substance in the urine indicates the presence of white blood cells and a possible infection. This exam also tests for nitrites. And this is because the compound nitrate is found in different foods. Now, bacteria can convert the nitrate to nitrites. Therefore, the presence of nitrite in the urine usually indicates a bacterial infection. Finally, the microscopic exam, where we use a microscope to identify cells, microorganisms, and other things which I will discuss. So of course, red blood cells in the urine means that there's blood in the urine, but one thing I wanted to add to that is that it's important that patients inform the clinical team if they are menstruating because it can cause contamination of the urine sample. And this exam also helps identify white blood cells in the urine, which is usually due to a UTI. When we identify specific microorganisms in the urine, it can help us pick the right medications 
for patients who may have an infection. The microscopic exam also looks at casts, and these are particles that are found in the urine, which can come from red blood cells, white blood cells, or even the cells that line your kidneys. So the origin of the cast can help with diagnosis. Finally, when crystals are present, it may be a sign of kidney stones, which makes sense, right? And that will be the end of this video. I hope this video was short, straightforward, and you learned something. If that was the case, please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below with questions, and also follow me on my Instagram at Pharmacist Academy. Thank you for watching this video and take care.